In this video, I am going to talk about poliomyelitis. So poliomyelitis is uh, something we call an enterovirus. So entero comes from enteric, which means the digestive system, so the, the GI tract. So this type of virus typically enters uh, through the mouth, um, but you usually have to be usually have to infect your hands with fecal matter. So I'm going to write it's a fecal oral route. So typically what happens is you have contact with uh, infected fecal matter. You can eat food or touch your mouth and that's how it's going to enter your body. Um, in a lot of cases, um, people are actually asymptomatic. Uh, but sometimes you can have symptoms that are very um, similar to what you would have in a cold. So, for example, you can have headaches. You can have uh, vomiting. You can have that. Yeah, fatigue is another one. You can have neck stiffness, sore throat. You can have severe uh, muscle pain. And in some cases, you can have paresis, which basically means muscle weakness. Right? So it's possible that you can get these symptoms and they would typically last a few days and uh, most of the time you would get no, uh, no severe repercussions or, or side effect. So now let's look at paralytic form. In 99% of the cases you would get these symptoms here in orange without any repercussions like I said, but in some cases so around 1% of infections, you can have this form of polio, which is paralytic. So typically what happens is during the first 10 days, you would get these symptoms that I mentioned earlier, but you would also get decreased motor function. So let's look at what happens actually. So let's look at the pathophysiology of the paralytic form. So here we have um, a cross section of the spinal cord. So here we have the anterior horn. Now, if we recall, the anterior horn is where all the cell bodies of motor neurons are. So let's draw a couple of them. Here we have cell bodies of motor neurons. Let's draw another one here in a different color. And here, each motor neuron is associated with muscle fibers to have its own motor unit. Let's draw a muscle with a couple of, um, a couple of muscle fibers. So let's say this neuron here will come and it will innervate its muscle fibers right and here let's say we have uh, another one that does the same thing it's going to come innervate each muscle fiber and we have another one here now keep in mind that in the anterior horn there is about, depending on the muscle that they innervate, uh, um, there can be a hundred up to a thousand motor neurons for a specific muscle, right? So the bigger the muscle, the bigger the motor unit, the motor unit is and the more motor neurons there are. And here um, in blue, the muscle fibers, keep it also in mind that there can be five to 1,500 muscle fibers. So I'm just drawing a couple of them just to il illustrate what is, um, so what is going on, right? So here, let's say 
this is our our biceps muscle okay so now let's see what happens uh, in the uh, in the paralytic form of poliomyelitis as i said before it's an it's an enterovirus which means it's supposed to stay in your gi tract but sometimes in one percent of cases the virus finds its way through the bloodstream and actually it can cross the blood brain barrier and so normally viruses don't do this but in this case that's what's happening and we're not sure exactly why it behaves like this but it finds its way through uh, the central nervous system and it affects the cells of the uh, it affects the motor neurons of the anterior horn in the spinal cord okay so now let's see what happens to our three cells here so what's going to happen is that the orange ones here will uh, die off and that therefore the cell body will no longer be able to give all the all the, all the nutrients to the uh, through through the axon and eventually the whole uh, axon will degenerate and this process is called the Wallerian degeneration okay so we only have now this one motor neuron that is innervating the muscle fibers here and now the orange ones are gone and so now you can you can imagine uh, how much this how much weaker this muscle has become because it's it is not innervated by as many neurons as before and now the the the, the body tries to compensate right now What's going to happen, we're, the body is going to try to compensate. Now, how is it going to do this? It's going to happen through a process called axonal sprouting. So the axons are actually going to spread to other muscle fibers of the same muscle to create gigantic motor neurons. So this is one way that the body tries to compensate for the loss of motor neurons. Through the process of axonal sprouting here, the body will be able to uh, regain 50% of its muscle mass during the first three months. Now, if you leave it another, another three months, so three to six months, will be able to get around 75% of muscle mass. And you can go up to about six months to um, three, or sorry, two years, you'll have around 100% muscle mass or muscle capacity. Now, this is uh, an approximation, some cases, it will never return to the way it was before, um, but this is possible after two years. It all depends on the person. Now, it's pretty interesting to know that even though you have, um, you have muscle loss, so let's say you, have, uh, you lost 60% of, of muscle cells of your, of your motor neurons, so you, you have 40 percent uh, muscle cell capacity okay let's say you have that you can still have a five out of five um, muscle uh, force through uh, through testing of that of that muscle you can have a strength of five out of five these huge gigantic motor neurons can really do a good job uh, for, for compensating. Okay, so we talked about axonal sprouting as one physiological mechanism to, to compensate. Um, we can also have denervation hy hypertrophy. So what is this? If you have less muscle fibers, well, those muscle fibers that are left need to be stronger. So they will become bigger and they will hypertrophy. 
another mechanism uh, for compensation is motor learning. So the person will just be better at doing a certain task, not because he's stronger, just because by practicing over and over a certain uh, a certain motor task, motor, you become better at it. So that's another way to compensate. So it's worth to mention that in axonal sprouting, the initial motor units can actually uh, multiply by five. So that means they can be five times more efficient with only one motor neuron. So we talked about um, physiological compensations, but we also have uh, functional compensation. So here we see um, hyper uh, extension of the knee, which is a compensation, a functional compensation, because what happens is your quadriceps muscle is so weak that you can't even uh, put weight on it on the on the weight bearing phase of gait. So on the on the touchdown of the of the right limb here, you can't put as much weight. And one way to be able to 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 stand on this leg, right, is by hyperextending the knee to lock it. And then he will be able to put weight on it. And as you can imagine, if you keep doing this over and over and over again, you'll develop hyperlexity of your of your of your knee so that's just one way that uh, that someone could compensate um, I also forgot to mention that this virus affects mainly children under the age of five um, so yeah in terms of complications we can have skeletal deformities so we can imagine by walking like this uh, for few months even years can cause uh, your 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 bones to start deforming because you have wrong posture wrong gait you can also have decrease in uh, range of motion if you uh, don't if you don't use certain parts of your body for example uh, then you can have uh, muscle shortening which can decrease range of motion uh, posture is also altered altered and um, the pain can also cause lack of sleep. And uh, sometimes when the condition is really bad, you're more at risk for osteoporosis because you, you, um, you end up less moving. And if you decrease the, the mechanical stress on your body, then your, your, your body will adapt. And if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So you're more at risk for osteoporosis. This was uh, a virus that was um, very present in the, in the early 1900s, but now with the, with the vaccine that was introduced in 1955, the prevalence of the, of the disease has drastically um, decreased, if not almost eradicated worldwide, uh, except in a few countries. But still, uh, the, the disease is very rare. Uh, the, the, the last major polio epidemic in, in Canada occurred in uh, 1959 with nearly 2,000 paralytic cases. If most kids, or not all kids, are being vaccinated for polio, why is this important to, to discuss? Well, there is something called the post-polio syndrome. If someone has had uh, an acute form of polio, on average, we found that about 35, 30 to 35 years later, we saw, we noticed that 30 to 60 percent of those people uh, had a resurgence of the condition. So they had the same symptoms as I mentioned before, but especially extreme fatigue and paresis or muscle weakness. So they don't necessarily get paralyzed again, 
but they develop this extreme muscle weakness. And it can be so bad that uh, some people can't even uh, walk. And this happens gradually over a couple of years. And people will notice, for example, that the, 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 oh, they seem like they have trouble standing up from a chair or entering the, the car, for example. So some functional activities in their, in their daily lives are starting to become affected. And uh, sometimes this can be minor. Uh, sometimes it can be very disabling. So uh, those, those are the people that you, uh, that we, uh, that as physiotherapists, we are going to see in the clinic. Another common symptom, as I said before, is muscle pain. But it's not the type of pain that you would typically feel after a gym workout. It's more, um, it's more deep, deep muscle pain. And this pain can uh, prevent you from sleeping. It affects sleep. And another common symptom is cold intolerance. And most of the time, the muscle pain is affected with cold. So people living in colder countries, they'll have muscle pain during the winter, for example. We don't really know the cause of PPS, of post-polio syndrome, uh, but we speculate, right? Um, one predictive factor is the severity of the initial infection. So usually the people that we see in clinic are going to be uh, people that as, ch as children, they have a very severe form of, uh, of paralytic poliomyelitis. Another one would be just aging in general. Uh, once, once you lose your motor neurons, they don't come back. You can have, you're basically functioning on the neurons that you have left to compensate for the, for the loss of muscle function. So what happens is with aging, we naturally tend to lose neurons, motor neurons. And we can lose up to 50% of neurons by the age of 60, right? You're already functioning on very, on huge motor units. So if you lose that motor unit, the only one you have left, well, your, uh, your condition is gonna deteriorate drastically, right? And another cause would be overuse. So, in the next video, I will present to you a case study and I will explain the, the treatment for people with the post-polio syndrome and uh, what we can do for them in physiotherapy.